reading from verse 1 to verse 3, then verse 17 to verse 20, to verse 27 to verse 33. So if you find 13, you are good to go. I mean, Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Tonight, I was just thinking how much it is an incredible privilege to be called an heir of the Most High God tonight. That we serve a God tonight of inheritance. We serve a God of promises tonight. I mean, we serve a God who is for his people. I mean, listen to me. If God is your father, the Bible makes it clear tonight that God has an inheritance for you. God has something in store for you that is good. And you can get excited tonight, amen, that maybe Bill Gates is your father. You can get excited tonight, amen, that Elon Musk is your father. You can get excited tonight that Jeff Bezos is your father. But the reality is none of them your father tonight. God is your father tonight, amen. When you become born again, and God, last time I checked, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof it tonight. He owns it all. The cattle on a thousand hills. The gold and the silver tonight. Amen. The Bible makes it very clear. He has an inheritance for us. He has plans for us. He has destinies for every single one of us tonight. But if we're going to enter in into all God has for his children tonight. It is so important that every single one of us uh, has a right spirit. And that's what I want to preach about tonight, amen. I want to preach about, amen, a right spirit, amen. From, uh, again, we want to look, at, amen, at the children of Israel. When we look at them, there is so much we can learn about them, that our lives parallel of so much. So much. Uh, and the God tells us in, in the New Testament that these things are written for our admonition. So we, you and I will not make the same mistakes and trip off, trip off like they did uh, tonight. I mean, we want to look at a very critical moment uh, in the history of the children of Israel tonight, amen. And I believe God wants to speak to us and help us uh, to have a right spirit. Numbers chapter 13, I'm going to read from one, verse 1 to verse 3. Then we're going to jump to verse um, 17. The Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel. For each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader amongst them. <clears throat> So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the uh, command of the Lord. All of them, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now let's jump to verse 17. We're going to read from verse 17 uh, to verse uh, 20. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in there are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds. Verse 20, whether the land is rich or poor and whether there are forests, uh, 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 whether, uh, whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Now let's jump to verse 27 and we're going to finish at verse 33. Verse 27 to verse 33. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. In other words, they're showing evidence. Nevertheless, this is where you say, uh-oh. The people who dwell in the land are strong. And the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying the land uh, uh, through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature, 
there were there we saw the giants the descendants of anna came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight a right spirit father tonight again we thank you coming before you by grace god by the blood and by much prayer God, we're asking God tonight you would minister your word to precious men and women that have assembled tonight. Almighty God, speak to us, trigger things, reveal things, open our eyes, oh God, so we may see. Father, with the eyes of heaven tonight, I'm asking God you would save. I'm asking God you would encourage. I'm asking God you would awaken. I'm asking God tonight you would show yourself strong. We give you the glory and the praise for all you're doing in this church. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, God, help us to enter into the inheritance, the promises, the plans you have for our lives. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen and amen. I want to consider, first of all, tonight, the promise. I want to consider... The promise tonight, amen. Tonight, every single one of us here tonight who are saved have a powerful promise from God into our own lives. I remember as a young man, my father making me promises tonight. And those promises, when he brought it to pass, the joy and the excitement that they've come to my life because he honored his word. But also I remember him making promises that for whatever reason, he could not amen, bring those promises to pass. But I want you to understand tonight is this tonight, church. God makes a promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 and chapter 7, verse 7 and verse 8. And this promise is literally about to be fulfilled Amen. In his descendants, amen. In our text, Genesis 17, 7 to 8, God speaks to Abraham and he says, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for a generation to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you are now as aliens, I will give it as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after to you and I will be their God. Listen to me tonight, church. Every promise of God, I mean, comes with the possibilities of an assault, an attack, or a delay. We see in the life of Abraham, God gives him a promise, and you're going to be a father of a multitude. I'm going to give you a son, but we see a delay of 25, I mean, years of waiting. We could talk about his son Isaac, that he goes into the land and he's assaulted time after time after time by people attacking. You can say Amen. This man attacking his promise because they didn't want him to prosper. We can talk about his great grandson Jacob, and he ran away from 21 years, ran away from his purpose, ran away from his call, ran away from the plan of God for his life. We can talk about Joseph this morning. Joseph is sold into slavery by his own brothers, and he stays in Egypt for many years. I believe longer than God wanted him to go through. And through all of this tonight, Amen. Whether it be Abraham, started with him all the way to. Joseph, throughout all of this, God still kept his promise intact for the descendants of Abraham. You see, tonight, amen, just like the children of Israel, we are children of God with the promise of of Abraham. God has made promises over our lives. There are promises he's put in his words that he wants you and I, amen, to hold on to, to stand upon, and to walk in. There have been times I've sat with people, whether it be in counseling sessions, or whether just been as a friend dealing with people, and I've sadly, amen, sat, amen, a couple of times, amen, with a young lady, amen, she's brokenhearted, amen, and she's telling me, you don't understand, he promised her he was going to marry me, and the guy sitting next to her, Amen to her, and he says these words, but I changed my mind. That's heartbroken tonight. That's where promise has been made and promise has been broken. Can I say something tonight, church? People do change their mind and people do break their promises tonight. But we must understand it is impossible for God to change his mind and to break his covenant promises tonight. You look in the word of God, there are tremendous promises that God will supply our need, all our need, uh, according to his riches and glory. Promises that my grace is sufficient for you. It is enough for you that when you are weak, that's when I am strong. Promises uh, that I'm able to keep you uh, from falling. Promises uh, that I give you victory. I give you power over hell and death. 
promises that all things work together for good for those who are the called according to his promise his workings and his purpose promises that i will forgive your sins and remember them no more promises that i go to prepare a place for you that where i am there you will be also one man said these words that you cannot break god's promises even when you lean upon them tonight church how God keeps uh, his promises. Uh, he even honors the promises uh, that he makes in his word. He's a God um, of his word. Uh, and we find the children of Israel uh, they had a responsibility to go uh, and spy the land uh, and inherit the promise uh, that God has given them tonight. Amen. Tonight, church, you and I must be ready uh, to venture into the promised land. Uh, amen. And I believe this is established uh, when having a relationship with God, uh, that God has a promise for us. Uh, God has a plan for us. Uh, God has a purpose for us but you and i will only gain it tonight we you and i may can only step into the establishment of god's promises by having a relationship with him tonight amen and the truth is those who have a different spirit those who follow god fully tonight are those who are going to receive or take hold of his possessions tonight see you you, are, you and i are not going to possess what god has for us by simply declaring it tonight you and I are going to possess what God has for us when we act upon the commands that have been instructed to us. In verse 17 to verse 20, we see specific instructions and commands. And Moses sent the, them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up to this way, into the south, go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in there are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage, bring some of the fruit of the land. And he gives them these instructions, he gives them, amen, these commandments. To, uh, 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 and the Bible tells us leaders, uh, amen, were chosen, uh, amen, from each tribe. These are not just any men, uh, these are leaders, uh, these are men, the top of the terror, amen, these are the cream of the crop, you can say tonight. Uh, they are chosen, amen, to represent each tribe, uh, amen, they are given specific instructions. Uh, you need to investigate, uh, you need to bring back some evidence, uh, and you need to report your findings and we know tonight if you know your bible that it did exactly this because of a promise this brings us amen to the probing tonight here's a question i want to ask how can 12 leaders see the same thing but come to different conclusions how can 12 top 10 men see the same things but don't agree in what they saw. And sadly, this is a common possibility. And what I mean by that, people come to church, they hear the same message preached, yet they come to different conclusions tonight. Sadly, some even say they heard differently. That pastor, you didn't say repent of your sins, you said repeat my sins. That you, you wonder what people are listening to sometimes. This is just how can certain people get it and others don't get it tonight. I believe this happens, amen, at the altar call. That people come and they weep and they cry. They repent of their sins. They get it. While others don't. don't. They don't get up, amen. They don't get their hearts right, even though they're not born again. Even though they have never repented of their sins and put their faith, their personal faith in Christ Jesus tonight. Listen, you can be in a church, listen to a sermon, and yet miss the message of that sermon tonight. Here are 12 spies, all 12 of them investigated, all 12 of them spent exactly the same time in that place, 40 days tonight. Yet the Bible tells us they did not get what Caleb and Joshua got. And sadly, this is a common thing tonight we deal with uh, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that there are some disciples, amen, tonight, amen, uh, who soon, uh, after salvation, uh, amen, they get it. Uh, others, after some time, they finally get it, yet there are some who never get it at all. Sadly, tonight, there are some people tonight that will be more committed to other people then they are committed to Christ. Sadly tonight, there's some people, amen, who are going to be more careful and others are going to be very careless. It's good to hear people's testimonies. And I've had the privilege of hearing 
some people's testimonies here. I don't know everybody's testimony. I don't know everyone's story. I don't know everyone's uh, uh, a journey to get into Christ and get their hearts right. But one of the testimonies I've heard time after time again is Sister Barbara's. And to me, it seemed like straight after salvation, she got it. That the moment she was encountered with Christ and confronted with her sins, she got her heart right before God. She goes back him into a boyfriend that she's been with since, I could be wrong, 16 years old or 50, uh, uh, maybe 17 years old. And she tells him, listen, it's done. We're done. I love you, but I love Jesus more. I'm going to church, whether we're you or we're not. And we know the story. She begins to serve God. Brother Charlie comes. Amen. He's vexed. He's angry. Church, church, church. He gets saved tonight. You know why? Because somebody got it tonight. Somebody got it straight away. That there was no dilly-dallying. There was no if, buts, maybes. There was no messing around tonight. She got it. You look in the word of God tonight. There are some reasons why some people get it. And others don't. One of the reasons why people get it on others don't deny it, amen, because you have the issue of carnality versus spirituality. And what I mean tonight, some people allow the spirit of God to lead them. The Bible tells us tonight, amen, that, that those, amen, who are called of God, amen, have the spirit of God upon them. And they're allowing the spirit of God to lead them. In other words, tonight, they're not allowing their flesh to dictate to them how they are to negotiate life and life circumstances. Amen. They're, they're allowing the spirit of God that now dwells in them and, and, and obeying what the word of God says regarding relationship, regarding finances, regarding, uh, amen, uh, perspective tonight. Amen. They're allowing the spirit to lead them while others, sadly, men allowing the flesh to lead them. That there is always this battle going on. Am I going to obey the spirit of God or am I going to allow my flesh to have its way? Another battle we have is the battle of the past and the future. This is where some people allow the past to dominate their minds. It's all about the past. It's all about what I did in the past. It's all about how I met. I, I handled the past. The Bible tells us that the children of Israel, anytime they came to a difficult spot, they will always refer back. It was so nice in Egypt. Oh, we ate leeks in Egypt and fish in Egypt. Oh, we had a wonderful time. And they were looking at the past. I mean, where they didn't have to struggle up, but had they had a, a you could say, man, a slave mentality tonight. But you have other people tonight, they believe, amen, the God that has a tremendous future ahead of them. Philippians 3, 13, this is Paul. It's his brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have, have taken hold of it. But the one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind me and looking forward to the things that are ahead. Also, the people are unwilling to pay a price. And that means tonight, amen, we know what we need to do, but we refuse what needs to be done tonight. The children of Israel knew what to do. Go and take the land. God did, actually says, if you read it, I've given it to you. Just go, just go and look at what I've given to you. Just go, just go and check out what I've, it's yours. Just go and bring my little some, something. And they go and they refuse to do what needs to be done. And the reason they refuse to do what needs to be done tonight is because what needs to be done tonight to them seemed too costly. So they decided to suppress the truth. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 and 3. This is after a man, Caleb, have said, listen, we need to go right now. And he's shut down by the other 10. The Bible tells us, so the congregation, this is 3.5 million people. So the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? God, what you're asking me to do is costing too much. So I'm going to suppress the truth. Another reason tonight is people hesitate to change. We can be so used to the old ways of life tonight and the way and the old way of thinking tonight, amen, that we will rather stay in the past than believe God for a glorious future tonight. Then you also, you have fear versus faith. Listen, one of the greatest enemies to, of progress is fear tonight. Fear will stop you doing anything. 
Fear will stop you going forward. Fear will stop you believing God tonight. But on the other hand, faith, amen, tonight, amen, will believe, amen, for the impossible. Faith, the Bible tells us tonight, is the object of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen tonight. And we see faith exhibited in the life of Caleb and Joshua. These men had faith, and because they had faith, they were willing to confront their fears tonight. To everyone who has fear, and we all have an element of fear tonight. If you are saved, you must be willing to rule over your fear tonight. You must be willing to confront your fears tonight. And the reality is some people simply refuse to accept the condition of progress. They're not willing to give up something in order to get up and gain something for God tonight. Here is God. He has a tremendous promise for you. He has a tremendous, listen, Barbara is not the only one tonight who have heard the gospel and been challenged, amen, by relationship that's not right before God and knowing tonight I have to give this up. And in reality, she was willing to give it up and God gave her, amen, what she was willing, amen, to give up. Amen, God gave it to her while they're others tonight, they were not willing to give it up eh? and they've lost what they want to hold on to tonight, church. Sad. It's an ongoing broken record CD. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it tonight. <laughs> Story. Then you have the sad reality or the sad dynamic of preacher versus people. When you preach tonight, it is one voice over many. When you preach tonight, it is a monologue. When you have Bible study, it's a dialogue. Preaching tonight, I mean, it's one voice, one singular voice. You could say versus various voices. And you could say our singular voice tonight was found in this man called Caleb. We can take it. He quieted the people. Rest yourself. Shush. Don't you hear? Didn't you hear what God says? It's ours. We can take that. Listen, they, 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 they're food to us. Let's go and get it. And here's one man, two really, him and uh, Joshua and Caleb, shut down by 10 of their brethren tonight. Tonight, you never allow the voices of the masses tonight to crowd out the voice of truth. Because tonight, church, there is an assault against the lone voice of truth. We see it with John the Baptist. John the Baptist would stand in the wilderness and cry out, one man, but he was assaulted by Herod and all that he had. Finally, he had his head was chopped off because it was the voice of truth. Noah tonight, amen. Noah is called a preacher of righteousness in a generation that was rejecting God. This man stood as the voice of truth and he preached to his generation. We can talk tonight about Stephen, the first martyr of the church tonight, amen. Again, here's a man as a voice of truth, stood by his own and preached the gospel. To the two voices of Joshua and Caleb was based upon what God said. While the voices of the ten spies was based upon how they saw things. And the ten spies amen, became sadly the leading force in what was happening in that time. And church, the reality is they failed to get it. And what's even worse than that, they convinced 3.5 million people also not to get it as well. Verse 33 of our text, we see this tonight. Bible tells us they were there. We saw the giants. The descendants of Annex came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sights, and so we were in their own sights. Let me pause and say this before I carry on. Who told them that? I don't see them having an interaction with anybody. All they did was come out with some grapes, and some big grapes they were, but they spoke to nobody at all. Who told them that the people of the land were looking at them as grasshoppers tonight? Listen, church, how you view yourself and how you view your God matters a lot when it comes to the inheritance he has for you. So the word of God tonight reveals the dividing line between those who get it and those who don't. So the Bible is filled with people who represent the two sides. We can talk about Esau tonight. Esau failed to get it tonight because the Bible tells us he gave up his birthright as a senior son of the patriarchal family. The rich young ruler, he failed to get it when he didn't want to give up the, when he gave up the opportunity to become a disciple 
of Jesus Christ, the man with the one talent, he failed to get it based upon how he viewed his master. He says, I knew, amen, that you are a wicked master, amen. We spoke about Agrippa tonight, who he's witnessed to by the Apostle Paul. He failed to get it by not responding, amen, to the conversion and the conviction and the preaching of the Apostle Paul tonight. But we look on the flip side and we see other people who do get it. David, the sweet psalmist, got it when he faced the giant Goliath. And we saw this morning in 1 Samuel chapter 17, he faced Goliath, amen. He began to declare that, listen, God is going to give you to us because the battle belongs to God. The apostle Paul got it. He knew, amen, that his supply line, amen, did not come from man. He came from God. The Philippians 4, 1, 9, amen. And my God shall supply all, amen, your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We can look and see Ruth got it when she chose to follow Naomi, amen. Rather than go back to Moab, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they got it when they refused to compromise, even with the possibility of death. And Joshua and Caleb got it. And the evidence of this man got it tonight, these men got it tonight, is that they were rewarded with the best of the land. They get it and it's confirmed in Joshua chapter 2, verse 9 and to 11. And said to them, I know that the Lord has given this land to you and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of the land of Egypt and what you did to Shion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites, eats of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Hallelujah. A new generation of spies went into the promised land. They viewed the promised land. And what separates this new generation from the old generation is this new generation began to interact with the inhabitants of the promised land. Here are these men tonight. They gathered facts, not feelings tonight. They actually spoke to people. What do you think of this? Uh, you hear about this? What you, what we, we're hearing this from Israelites. What do you think about them? And what they received from the people of the land. This Israel got their serious people. Their God is a serious. In fact, their God is God. But when you met the old Israelites, the Israelites, they didn't speak to anybody. They simply came back saying, listen, we're like grass was in the sides. That's why I'm asking, who told you that? Who said that? Listen, church, if you choose to delay your progress, or minimize your God tonight. You will never end up receiving or knowing what God could have moved for you for tonight. Listen, don't delay your progress or your blessing of all God has for you. And all God wants to do in your life. Uh, because you are wrong uh, or you have a wrong view of yourself uh, and a wrong view of your God tonight. He's a great God. Uh, he's a big God. He's a mighty God. Uh, amen. Who moves and honors uh, his promises. Here is Rahab. Rahab confirms that the inhabitants of Jericho were fearful of the children of Israel as they came out of Egypt. I want you to listen to me tonight, church. The enemy that you're afraid of is actually terrified of you tonight. Frightened of you tonight. You need to get out in your spirit tonight. Because 40 years before Caleb and Joshua, they saw this. 40 years before, before it was confirmed, they saw this tonight. They saw things differently. This is an omnipotent God at work. And 40 years later, they saw what they saw, you could say, was confirmed by the news of the new generation of the two spies brought back to the people of God. Joshua 2, 23 to 24. Then the two men started back. They went down out of the hill, forded the rivers, and came to Joshua, the son of Nun. They're 80 years old now. And told them everything that had happened to them. And they said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given the whole land into our hand. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Joshua and Caleb knew this 40 years ago. Here's a message that's coming 40 years late, you could say, tonight. 
They were convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt God has given us the victory. Tonight, church, why was Joshua and Caleb so confident about taking the land? Why? Why are 10 spies terrified and not confident and two men are filled with confidence that we can do this tonight? I'll tell you why tonight, church. Amen. Confidence comes tonight by knowing some things that other people don't know tonight. See, they were confident because they knew the character and the power of their God, that we serve a God that never fails tonight, church. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. I want to lead, read from the New Revised Standard Version. I want to close with this. He says, He shall seduce with intrigue those who violate the covenant, but the people who are loyal to their God shall stand firm and take action. Church, when you understand divine order tonight, amen, you are going to, and that's the only time you're going to experience the provision and the power of God to possess all that he has for you. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes tonight. Amen. We are a people of inheritance. We, are, we, 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 we serve a God of promise. We serve a God who never fails. We serve a God who is able to keep his word. That what he has said shall he not do. And if we truly believe this tonight, it would affect how we walk. And you know in the Bible, that word walk is a lifestyle. It's how you function, how you move, how you roll. That you truly and I, I truly believe this tonight, it changes everything. Joshua and Caleb tonight were men who are ahead of their time. Because they saw something a whole nation just could not, in many ways, refuse to see. We looked at it this morning again, if I can encapsulate it in a simple scripture. God be for me. God be against me. God is for us. He's told us his house is house. guys are saying we're like grasshoppers. No, they're bread to us. They're for our, they are for our consumption. Let's go and take that land. And I believe tonight, amen, God tonight wants us to believe this for Tottenham. God wants us to believe this for our lives. It's ours. This land is ours. This spirit of influence is ours. This land is ours. Let's go and take it. Let's not wait for the next generation tonight. Let's do, let's be wandering around the wilderness for 40 years in disobedience. And God for to raise a new generation. And we could have taken it years ago. Let's believe God for it now. Very quickly, maybe you're here tonight, you're not right with God. You're here tonight, you've been you you you've been ravaged by sin, by bad choices by curses generational curses family curses tonight you're here tonight you're broken you're confused there's fear there's depression maybe even suicide in your mind tonight our God is not just a promise making promise keeping God tonight he's the God of the living not the God of the dead he's the God of life and not death tonight and he wants to give you life he wants to give you eternal life don't leave this place without Jesus tonight. Don't leave this place without getting your heart right with God tonight. You're not here by accident. You're not here by mistake. Jesus loves you and has a tremendous plan for you tonight. And if you surrendered your life to Christ, friend, you can leave it with a right spirit, a godly spirit. Very quickly, on the sound of my voice, you're not saved, you're not born again, you're right with God. You say, Pastor, you pray for me tonight. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. If that's you, just lift your hand up and put it down tonight. I want to pray for you very quickly. In this building, up and down, right to the left, front to the back. The Spirit of God is here. God loves you. Just lift your hand up. Put it down tonight. Maybe you backslid. You're away from God. You know, when you backslide tonight, you exchange the right spirit for a wrong spirit. When you backslide tonight, the Spirit of God no longer dwells with you tonight. There are evil spirits to come. And they begin to inhabit your mind. They begin to happen your countenance. They begin to happen your attitude. See, when 
the 12 spies said no to God, the spirit came upon them that infected 3.5 million people. But Joshua and Caleb stood out because they had a different spirit. The spirit of God dwelt with them. Tonight, backslide, if you will repent of your sins, God will give you the spirit of God again. There'll be that victory over your life. There'll be that joy. There'll be that peace. There'll be that self-control. There'll be that gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit begins to dwell and begins to work for you. You need to humble yourself and ask Jesus to come into your life again. If that's you, you backslid, you want to recommit your life, lift your hand up tonight, put it down. I'll pray with you. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to the people of God tonight. Taught them we are children of promise. We are children of with a tremendous inheritance because we serve a tremendous God today. And what God has for us tonight is not about claiming, believing, and receiving. What God has for us tonight is far much more than declaring by word tonight. You and I must obey his word. You and I must act out what he has very clearly stated in his word tonight. You and I must believe him and take him at his word tonight as, as we do so. I believe the spirit of Joshua and Caleb will be upon us. That others may fall by the wayside tonight, but listen, you will be ahead of your time. And where they did not receive the promise because of their disobedience, you and I will walk into tremendous destiny, tremendous purpose, and a tremendous plan that God has for us. I'll say it again, when you do understand divine order, you experience divine provision and the possession that God has for you. Oh, come on tonight. Let's all rise up to our feet. Let's come to this altar tonight. God has made some promises to his church. God has made some promises to you and I. Let's believe tonight for it.